says, God is good, God is good, and God is good. Amen. Amen. Another week he's taking us through another week, and we are here this Sunday, once again, in the presence of God, even to hear what he has for us this morning. And once again, I'm here to just encourage us and to let us know that the God that we serve, he's a true God. He never changes the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I've been all week, I've been trying to just go through what to tell us this week, but I just came up with this topic that the, this is the title of my message, that the Lord is here. Amen. The Lord is here. I want you to know always that God is always with you. You may not feel it. You may not see. It may not seem as if he's there, but I want you to know that God is here. Tell yourself every day that God is here. God is with you. Wherever you find yourself, the psalmist said that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil because he's more than his staff. God is always with us. And I'm going to look at a story. It's a very long story. I'm going to try and just paraphrase it and read portions of the story. And then we'll use the one to just look at a few verses and then we'll be done. Amen. Today is communion service too, so we should just take note. But I'm reading from um, John chapter 11. It's a very popular story that we all know. John chapter 11. Uh, it's a very long story, a chapter, but I'm going to just read portions of it. And so I'm starting on verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with his hair, with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore this sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man, the Son of God, might be glorified thereby. And then, but then and now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Amen. And I'm, I'm going to skip some verses. When I get a chance, I'm going to read the whole chapter. But so, and then the, what was it? verses. And when he heard therefore that he was sick, he had both two days. They sent for him that he, the, 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 the one that he loved, he was sick. The Bible said, Jesus did not go. He waited two more days, still in the same place. And after that, he told his disciples, let us go to Judea again. Look at it. He said, let us go to Judea again. Again, is that they've been there before. But somebody says something again. That means that you've been there before, and he's saying again. And the reason why he was saying again was because the first time he was there, it was a very hostile time. They wanted to kill him. They nearly stoned him to death, Jesus Christ, and he had to leave. So he said, well, let us go to Judea again. And then look at what his disciples said out. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of Lay sought to stone thee. And goest thou there again? You know, there, there was danger. And Jesus was saying, let us go again. And the disciples, being like us, saying that, hey, the first time we went there, they wanted to kill you. You want to go there again. And then Jesus said, was, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, and he, he stumbled not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walketh in the night, he stumbled, because there's no light in him. Amen. What he was trying to tell them was that, if you do what God has, if you do it in line with what God is saying, if you do what God is saying, in spite of the danger, God is going to preserve you. Hallelujah. You see, in, in a day, there are 12, day, 12 hours in a day. That means there are 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. So long as you are doing what you are doing for God, in, in his plan, going according to his guiding and his bidding, God will protect you. In spite of the danger that is there, you know, he knew that these disciples, these Jews did not believe him, and they wanted to kill him. The Bible said, oh, he told them, let us go to do that again, because there was somebody that he loved. That tells you something. That if God, if you're on God's side, and you're on God's side, and you're on God's side, and God loves you, God will do anything to come to your help. Hallelujah. Lazarus was somebody that he loved. And he knew the danger in going to Judea. The Bible says that what he told the disciples that what, there's 12 hours of light. That is, if you are working in God's plan, and that's what I want to encourage, if you're working in God's plan, God is going to preserve you, no matter what the danger is. Hallelujah. But if you are working in darkness, the Bible says you will stumble. As if you go out of this plan, if you do it by your own plan and your own uh, ideas and depend on friends and this thing, then this is where the danger is. But if you go in God's plan and direction, then God will protect us. Hallelujah. So we'll go on. And, and then he told him what? He, he was sleeping. And they said, if he's sleeping, then he'll do better if he's sleeping. 
I'm going to skip all those verses. Then we we'll just go, I will just so that because of time, so that we can just take the main verses I want to read. But there's one thing that was said in verse 16. Look at verse 16. And then Thomas, which is called Didymus. This was the like same Thomas, the doubt the, the, the people call him doubt, doubting Thomas. But look at what he said here. Let us go also go that we may die with him. Amen. There's one thing. Let, let, let us also go that we may die with him. At least in spite of everything that we can see about him, he, he had trust that this man, Jesus Christ, that he was following. If anything at all, let us go because you know that he's going to be well with them. But if he dies, we are willing to die with him. It's something that you as an individual, like me and you, we have to make a decision. Every day we have to make a call whether we are going to go with Jesus. In spite of the dangers that are in the way, if Jesus is leaving us, we rather die with him. That's why uh, um, Job said, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. If, it's, if I have to die because of God, then let, me, let, 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 let it be so. Hallelujah. And then so we go, and then we, we get to verse 21. And that's what I want to say. I would read from um, um, verse 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Because by that time, Lazarus, this time was not sick, but was dead. When they told Jesus Christ, he was sick. But he got to know that he died. But so now in Jesus, he was, uh, they came to comfort him. These Jews who did not believe, who wanted to stone Jesus Christ, they came to comfort them because their family is a neighborhood. And then verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. So I'm going to look at these two people, Martha and Mary today. Martha and Mary. Let's see their response to Jesus. See, as soon as Martha heard that Jesus Christ was coming, he got up and went to meet him. But Martha sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, the Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. If thou had been here, my brother had not died. That's the title of my talk. That's why I put it back to that Jesus is here. He said that if Jesus had been there, Lazarus will not die. And this is what Jesus Christ said. But I know that what is it? But I know that even now, whatsoever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said unto him, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto him, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he would shall he live. And whatsoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Hallelujah. So now, the, so Martha met Jesus Christ and said that if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. And then Jesus Christ went on to tell him that he is the life and the resurrection. You know, so he was not dead in person. That's what I want to know, right? He, the body of Jesus was not there, but he was there. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm entitled today that the Lord is here. That no matter where you find yourself, sometimes it may feel as if, it may feel as if you have done everything right, and it feels as if there's nothing there. Job said, I look to the, I go to up, I don't see him. I go backwards, I don't see him. I go to my left, I don't see him. I go to my right, I don't see him. But I know that he knows the way that I choose. And when I am tried, I will come forth as good. Hallelujah. Always know that no matter where you find yourself, always believe and trust that God is with you. You know, because the only way we will know, the best way to try your faith is to know whether you can hold on in the distance of your object. The object of our faith is Jesus Christ. And if Christ is not around and we can still trust in him, that is when you know you have true faith. Hallelujah. When you give up, when he, you, um, something happens and you just give up because you don't feel him, and because you don't feel him, you feel that, oh, then there, there's no help coming from anywhere. Then your faith is little. If, if he has no strength. But I would say that if your, your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Today, I came to tell you, is what? If, if for anything at all, you want to give up, please, I just want you to know that Jesus Christ is always with you. The Lord is always here. Have that. Don't, don't, don't say it like Martha. Yeah, Martha said what was true. If Jesus had been there, his brother would not have died. But Christ wanted to let him know that whether he was there in person or not, so long as you know that he is Christ, everything is going to work out. And that's what uh, Martha said. So, and then look at what the exchange is. He said, and anyone that liveth and believeth in me will never die. Believest thou this? That was the question to Jesus Christ. And that is the question to ask. Do we believe what Christ is saying? The words that you will be reading, the Bible that you will be studying. Okay, the things that you've been reading and studying, 
do you believe that what God has been telling you, what you've been heard, what you've been hearing, and what you've been taught, do you believe what Christ is saying? Sometimes it's easy to say you believe. It's only when things come up, that's when you know whether you believe. So he asked him, do you believe what I'm telling you? And then she said unto Christ, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which has come into the world. So, which has come into the world. And that was in the verse 20, so she said, so she, she, and when she has said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly. Look at it. So after he had told Christ that we're here, he believes. But see, he went his way. Because after the interaction with Christ, once again, his faith was with them. Whatever doubt that he had in Christ, Christ was trying to convince him that, listen, believe in me. Because if you believe in me, everything will work out the way it was it's supposed to work out. I called it to my plan. Hallelujah. If you, so, one thing about Jesus Christ is that, that anytime you, you encounter Christ, his main goal is to convince you to put all your trust in him. Don't put it in anything. He is trying to convince you. Take away all the cobwebs, all the doubts in your faith, all the kinks that makes you slow down. Anytime he sees you, he's not there to condone you. He just wants to convince you what to trust him. Trust him. So no matter to what I believe. And that is after he has said that, after his faith has been regenerated, that means he went away and called her sister Mary secretly. That's one thing about faith. Once your faith is strengthened, you want to share it. You want to tell somebody about it. You want to tell somebody. The Bible says that I will make my boast in the Lord. In Psalm uh, three, the, um, Psalm thirty-four, verse two, He said, "I will, we will make our boast in the Lord. The humble shall see and be glad." What it means is that what, those who, who, have, who have built in Christ, who have seen God work in their lives, will, will speak of this thing so that the weak in Christ, those who are not strong like they are, will hear it and be glad, and know that the God that they said is a good God, amen, that he will never fail them, that in times of trouble, he will be there to survive and to hold them up, amen. So those of us who are built up in Christ, who know God more, we are not supposed to look down on those who are not. Our goal is to, to encourage them, to share Christ with them, to tell them the good thing that Christ has done for us, so that they too will be encouraged to hold on and to stay the course with Christ, hallelujah. So, and the Bible says that, look at, uh, uh, um, and it says what? He called Mary her sister, that's verse 28, sister secret, saying, the master is come and called for thee. And Bible says in verse 29, as soon as she heard that, as soon as she heard that, Bible says she arose quickly and came unto him. First of all, when a mother heard that Christ was came, he went, but Bible says uh, Mary sat still in the house. Mary sat still in the house. But when he heard that the master was calling him, I would say, quickly, as soon as he, she arose quickly and came unto him. And now, verse 30, Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was at the same place where Martha met him. And 31, the Jews that were with him, which were her, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. When they saw the head get up quickly, he said that he's going to the grave to weep there. I'll come back to that verse. But look at what verse 32, what Martha and Mary also did. So now that, because there's a difference here. Then Martha, over that, then when Mary came, was come unto Jesus Christ and saw him, Bible said, he fell at his feet, saying unto the Lord, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Amen. So verse 32. So Mary also said the same thing. The same thing that Martha said. Mary said the same thing. But look at the difference. The Bible says that what? Mary, he fell, she fell at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. The feet of us, total surrender. Although she, she felt that Jesus Christ was not there, if he had been here, but in spite of all that, Bible says he, she fell at the feet of Jesus Christ. She surrounded all that in spite of everything that has happened, Jesus Christ was still his Lord. He was still his king. He was still his master. That everything that he, Jesus Christ said, was what was important. Hallelujah. Bible says he, he fell at, or she fell at the feet. And this is because, and then when you look at it, when you go to the next verse, it's like the, the interaction that Jesus Christ had with Mary, 
uh, the matter in the beginning. She did not say the same thing to Mary. But he, he said, if you, I'm, I'm the life and the resurrection. He said, but he didn't say that to Mary because the, what, brother, Mary had already encountered Jesus Christ and he knew Jesus Christ. He had total faith in Jesus Christ. I would say he was the one who anointed the feet of Jesus Christ. And Christ said that anyone the word of God is preached, his name, her name will be mentioned. Hallelujah. She had formed her. So when she saw Christ, in spite of any doubts or any misgivings as to whether Jesus Christ didn't come on time or all this, she still gave Jesus Christ the reverence. That's what she fell at her feet. As soon as she saw her, she fell at her feet. And that is what I want us to know this morning. That Christ is here. In spite of what has happened, in spite of what has been said, in spite of how you are feeling, give him the reverence. Let God be God at every time in your situation. You know, let God be God every time in your situation. There were two people, they said the same thing, but, but their response was different. They said the same thing, if you had been here. But Mary submitted, submitted. He submitted totally to the rule and the authority of Jesus Christ. And that is what, because human beings by nature, we want somebody to be around us to encourage us and tell us that our things are going to work out. But these same people, this same people, the Bible says, when he arose hastily to go, they thought that he was going to the grave. They were going to, he was going to the place where there was no hope. The grave, the, the grave that didn't give you any hope. That's where the thing that you loved was lost. Why would you go back there? But no, he went, she went to Jesus Christ where there was hope. Instead of going to your grave, instead of dwelling on the thing that has taken you, eating you, trying to eat away the faith, or every desire that you had in you, the thing, the grave that took it away, the thing that you loved, instead of going there or dwelling there and using that to go away from Christ, I was thought he, she went to Jesus Christ. Let us go to Christ instead of going to the grave. And that was what she did. When she went there, although the grave had taken away what she loved, she still submitted to Jesus Christ. The because she had enough faith in Jesus Christ that was, if Christ was there, anything was possible. Hallelujah. And that is what I want you to know this morning. That the Christ that we said is always here. You may not feel him in body. You may not feel him in person. Sometimes you have done everything. You've done all the praying. You've done all the fasting. You've done everything. You've studied the word of God. And things seem not to work. But I want you to know that Christ is still there. The fact that you're not hearing him does not mean that he's not there submit, fall at his feet, continue to fall at his feet, continue to submit, continue to let him be God, continue to magnify him, continue, as I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be, Psalm 31, 34 verse 1, stay the course, you may not feel him, but I want you to know that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is still with you. Christ is here. Amen. Mary fell at his feet. Fell at his feet because he had encountered Christ and he knew that the God that we said is the same yesterday. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has promised you, and that's what um, um, Moses said in Hebrews 11, verse um, from 17 to uh, 22. Moses, was out, when he had come of age, when he come of age, when he came of age, obviously he chose to suffer. He chose to suffer than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a moment because he was seen the one who was what, invincible. The one who was what, invincible. He was, he, he was seeing somebody who was, it is not visible, but he's still seeing the person because I'm like, he's gone beyond just the eye. But we say, taste and see. Taste, encounter God, and taste the flavor of God, and then you will see. Till you taste him, you will never see. Taste God. I encounter God. And that's why the difference between Mary and Martha. Mary had encountered Jesus Christ. He had anointed his feet. It was the same Jesus Christ that saved him from death. People were ready to throw it, literally just get rid of him. But Christ saved him. And he saw that this one, in spite of the worst of his state, Christ still loved him. He, she never, he never judged him. He never held anything against him. He said, your sins are forgiven. So this morning, I came to let you know that in spite of what has happened, can you begin to just submit? Can you begin to fall at his feet and know that he's here? What you are going through in this pandemic, 
everything going haywire. Things are falling apart. Your plans did not go the way you planned from the beginning of the year. Things are just not working out. You are hearing people call you and give you stories. And you, you, there's so much despair. But I came to let you know that what Christ is still here. He has not left. He is still here. Can you fall at his feet? Can you fall at his feet and submit to him and let him be God in your life? Hallelujah. But sometimes this blessing, these troubles that come in our way, it is God's own way of trying to see whether the faith that we say we profess in him, whether it's true or not. And the only way you can know it is when, when the object of your faith is not around and things come your way and you're still believing that that object, that thing that makes you, make, makes you move, still is the thing that you want to hold on in the face of everything going against you. Everybody speaking against you. Can you still trust and hope in Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. And then sometimes, Bible says Moses, he chose to suffer because he saw the one who was invincible. God was not there, but he saw him. It's because he had encountered this uh, God in the burning bush. He had, he had had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And because he had tasted God, he knew that this God was going to take him through. There's light because God has said it, he was going to do it. Hallelujah. Because, and then you can just compare the same thing with Peter. Look at Peter. Jesus Christ was there, and this Peter denied him three times. Jesus Christ was there, and Peter. So sometimes it's not the person being there that makes the difference. It is you knowing. But Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came again, this same Peter, who was denying Jesus Christ in his presence, boldly confessed him in his absence. Hallelujah. And is it because he had tasted, he had encountered Jesus Christ? Christ, I'm the life and the resurrection. Believers doubt this. The things that you have read, the things that have been said to you, the things that you have encountered with God, the experiences that you've had of God, do you believe it? That's the question this morning. Believers doubt this. He said, I am the life and the resurrection. Whatever you think, that thing that you love so much that has died, he said he is the life. If that's what he wants you to die, he is the life to that thing that is dead. He can bring it to the Bible says that uh, um, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 11. Bible says uh, in um, Sarah, Bible says by faith, Hebrews 11, by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive because he regarded the one who had promised to be what faithful. By faith, he received strength to conceive. He did not consider the deadness of his womb. The womb was dead. Who made it? And the thing that funny, the thing that most of the things that that actually are against us, that come against us. There are things that men have labeled. Men, has, men have labeled this thing. It is not God that is labeling this thing. It is men that have labeled it. And because we depend on men to give us, uh, to give us some kind of um, validation instead of Christ, you as a Christian, your validation should only be found in Christ and Christ alone, not in any man. Don't sell your son. There's a problem in Africa. So we are selling the son to buy a kingdom. People are selling the sun to buy a kingdom. Let us not sell the sun to buy the kingdom. The sun is all that you need. Hallelujah. Because the candy, you burn it to, to, you have to buy, you have to buy another one. Don't depend on men. Because men will label you, they will put you, in the, they, they can't put any higher than themselves. And sometimes they only need to get me to their level. But God is all for you. He's out there for your good. He said, believe it thou this. Verse 32, believe it thou this. And then when you go on to read, um, 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 verse 33. So verse 33, Bible says, and, Bible says, Bible says, and when, therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. Bible says, this is, this is a, you know, Bible says we have a high priest. We have a high priest. Who knows us? He, he shares in our worries. He shares in our tears. He shares in our fears. He shares in our, our pain. He is a man acquainted with grief. When he saw them with people, thought he was moved in his spirit. He rolled in his spirit. And the 35 said, and this is what wept. He cried. So what you're going to, don't think he Bible said he cried. When he saw them crying, he also cried. Just to let you know that what. He shares in your troubles. What you are going to know that you are not alone. He is there with you. 
You may not feel him, but he shares it with you. He's a man acquainted with you. Our worries, our, our fears, our sorrows. He's, he shares with you. See, we are the high priest. Who does the high priest that we have? I'm saying this high priest that we have. He shares in everything that we go through. Nothing that we do, he knows it all. He shares in it. If you suffer for you suffer in Christ, you suffer with him. Hallelujah. I would say he wept. And then, and then look at what the Jews said. And the Jews said, Behold, how he loved him. And then some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have caused even this man should not have died? You know, even the unbelievers, they know that he could do it. Unfortunately, we the church, the Christian, we don't even believe what that our God that we said can do it for us. Hallelujah. You say what? Look, look at the unbelievers, what they are saying, the Jews. Say, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have saved this man from dying? Unfortunately, we who have Christ, sometimes we don't even believe what we have. And today I came to ask you, say, believers thou this, I am the life and the resurrection. Whatever is bothering you today, I came to let you know that if you hold on to Christ and know that he's by your side, you see, he's the life and the resurrection. And then he, he, he told them, he told um, and the study is, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself came to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon and then Jesus said, take it away. Take away the stone. Now look at it. Take away the stone. And look at what Martha said. Martha, the sister of that was there. The comparing Martha and Mary. Mary has submitted. Mary knew that what? There was no more need for any argument or any complaints. Christ was there. The matter was settled. But look at uh, Martha. Martha said what? The sister of him that was there said, by this time he's thinking he has been dead for four days. He has been dead for four days. They, 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 they said the same thing, but their responses were different. And because Mary had come of age and he believed Jesus Christ, nothing else mattered. He didn't see anything else did not mean anything to her anymore. Nothing was too difficult in the presence of Jesus Christ. So long as Christ was there, she received satisfaction in her faith, satisfaction in her soul and spirit that Christ was on the scene. And if he, she, Christ meant that Lazarus should be alive, Lazarus should be alive. But Martha, although she said that she believed, when Christ moved the stone, he said, what, by this time, he's thinking, by me, he has been dead for four days. Can we believe what Christ is telling us? Do you know that Christ is still by you? Do you believe that he is still by you? Saying it is not enough. So sometimes problems come our way, not because, uh, yeah, but we come so that some of these things, the kings in our lives, the kings in our faith, the doubts and the things that we have there can be taken away. Because then you know whether you, you believe in him or you don't believe in him. He said, move the stone. That hindrance, that doubt, that thing that is... You are crying that your loved one is dead. The person is dead to bring your loved one to life and now you are still complaining. Oh, that by this time, it, 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 it's well beyond, well beyond recovery. I would say, uh, Sarah, by faith, she received strength to conceive. I prayed today that no matter what you are going to, you will receive strength by the Holy Ghost to conceive once again. That which you have lost, and you will bring it back once again. Hallelujah. That which has been lost in your life, the thing that made you want to serve God more, and then something happened, and somewhere, somehow, your faith was dealt a blow. I pray that today, once again, there will be a regeneration, that you will know that he is the life and the, uh, and, and, and the resurrection. You see what? By this time, He's thinking. Can you let go and let God be God? Hallelujah. Can you let go and let God be God in your situation today? Take away the stone. He's asking you and me, take away the stone. That which is being a hindrance to you believing in him. That which is being a hindrance for you to believe that Christ is still there. That is which is being a hindrance for you to believe that what he has said he will do. We heard in the pastor that said something. Abraham, he believed that if God gave him the son and he's asking for him to be sacrificed, he said God can bring him back to death alive. Mary did not consider the deadness of his womb. 
The Bible says because of that, he receives strength to conceive. What are you considering? Can you lift your faith up this morning? And Christ will make it available. Hallelujah. You know, the church is complaining. We, we, think that, uh, we cannot do the things that will happen in the time of Christ. But we have more active, more ammunition now we need to uh, advance the kingdom of God. But unfortunately, we don't believe in what we have. We have the word of God, which is Christ himself. It is more real than anything that you can say. Because nothing was made without the word of God. Nothing was made without the word of God. And you have the word of God. And now you have the spirit of God. The one that wrote the word, the one that inspired the word to be written. So you have the word and you have the source of the word. The two of them together. And then you have Christ up there. Bible says, I go out so that you will do greater things. The greater things you will do because I go to the Father. So Christ is up there interceding for us. And the word of God and the Holy Spirit is with us here on earth. And the kingdom of God is now advancing because the church has lost. We have lost our ability to trust and hope in God, to believe that if he has said it, that is what he will do. He considered him faithful who had promised. Christ is here. The Lord is here this morning. I came to tell you that the Lord is here this morning. You may question it. Something has happened to you. If your loved one may have died. When he wanted him to come on the scene, he did not come. But he had both two days because he said, this is not unto death, but it is to the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified. It is about God. Last week we heard that it was not a sensation. It was not the earthquake and the fire and the wind. It was a still small voice. That was the most important thing. What Christ is here, he being here is the word of God. That was what is important. And do you believe that? Can you believe that? Can you bring yourself to believe that? Can you be like Mary, that in spite of what has happened, you still submit, you still fall to the feet of Jesus Christ. Total surrender. The first time when he anointed his feet of Jesus Christ, I would say he sat, but this time he fell. When he was building up his faith, he sat. But when the faith was built, he realized that the only thing that mattered was to let Christ be God in every situation. Take yourself out of it. Yours is just to trust and to hope in him. I would say this time, he fell flat. He fell at his feet. They all ask the same question. If you had been here, the one fell flat. And after that, he, he said, that Mary, there's no account of Mary saying anything. Everything was matter. Because it matters, and that was what Christ does. Anytime Christ encounters you, he wants to build your faith up. He wants to convince you to know that what you have to put everything in him. That is only when you see the benefit of following him. Hallelujah. We have to put everything in him. Matter, although he has said it, was not up to that point yet. So he kept saying that by this time he's thinking. By this time, he keeps saying that by this time, this thing is way gone, and nothing will happen for you again. By this time, it has been there for four days. Your womb is dead and it's done. The Bible says by faith, by faith, and this faith came because of they believed the one who had promised. The Bible says Moses, oh, he, he, he chose to suffer because he, he saw the one who was invincible. The one who was invincible. As we start this prayer and fasting, can you begin to believe for your family, for that thing that you need? Or prepare or that thing that is coming against you and you think that there's no hope. That thing that is coming against you is pushing hard against you and you think that there's no hope. As we pray and fast, can you believe to can you just begin to tell us that God is here? I am happy that God is here. And then begin to believe what He has said to you. Hallelujah. I said about Peter in the presence of Jesus Christ, he denied him. But when the spirit and the word were came. This same Peter confessed him boldly, boldly. We will do greater things because he said that I go to the Father. Let us begin to do, know that when, when these things come, troubles, when they come, they just come to strengthen our faith, not to make us weak. Hallelujah. So in the presence of Jesus Christ, I wrote some, some things here. It will satisfy your faith. If you believe that Christ is there, this will satisfy your faith. It will always make your faith strong. 
always know uh, it, and it, it, uh, that once you become, when you come, once you come of age, once you believe your faith is grown enough, like he said, what, I will magnify, I will make my boast in the Lord. And these those people who do that are the people who are mature. When they come of age in faith, they make their boast and they encourage them that I'm weak. Amen. When Martha heard about Jesus Christ and his faith, he went to tell his sister, Mary. The same thing about Andrews. When he encountered Jesus Christ, he went to call his brother Peter. We are supposed to encourage each other. Hallelujah. Because as your faith it grows, it revives you and then you become another way of what communicating. And it was very important. No, when he went to talk to his sister uh, Mary, the Bible said what? He spoke to him, he spoke to her secretly. When the people in the house, he didn't shout that oh, Christ is here. He, she went secretly to talk to Mary. It is very important the way you communicate your faith to people. Hallelujah. Don't make them look as if they are, they are, they are nothing. He spoke to her secretly. And Bible said he arose quickly. As soon as he heard Jesus Christ, I pray today that whatever has made you be slow to respond to Christ will be taken away by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That from now onwards, as you hear Christ, as you encounter him, may you react swiftly. Obviously, he got up hastily to go and see him. And the people said out, he was going to the grave, but he was going to Jesus Christ. Don't go to your grave. Because that place will only show you despair and hopelessness. Go to Christ. Go to Christ. Because he is the one. Go to Christ and then get Christ and take him along to your grave. And you will bring that which is your love, that is very in the grave, back to life again for you. Amen. Don't go to the grave. Always go to Christ first. And if you have to go to the grave, then carry Christ along. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he is the life and the resurrection. Amen. Another thing is, you know, the reason I'm saying uh, uh, this go to the grave, uh, to go to Christ first. Bible says what the children of Israel, when they were going, after they came out of Israel, when they got to the waters of Mara, Peter, and they were started crying again, hey, what should we do? What did God give them? God gave them a tree. They were asking for water, but he gave them a tree. And the tree signaled Jesus Christ, the tree of life. Throw you, and when they put the tree in the water, the water became tasteful again. Let's begin to throw the tree at our, our troubles, not the other way around. Amen. Begin to throw the tree. And the tree, Jesus Christ, begin to throw the word. Know that he is here. And because he's here, throw that tree in your, against your problems. Put that tree in your problems. Throw the tree at your problems. The Lord is here. Believe thou this. Can you believe God this morning to know that he is with you? That whether you feel him or not, say, I go to the left, I don't see him. I go to the right, I don't see him. But I know that he knows the way that I choose. And when I am when I am tried, you are being tried for whatever you are going through now. You are being tried. Hold on to it. Let's stay the course. Believe that he is by you. Believe what he has said. See him who's invincible. And whatever you want will, will, will come to pass. Hallelujah. Don't depend on human beings. Because human beings will not help you. They will label things and they, that will get you stuck. But believe in what God is saying. So I say the, the, the great end of Christ dealing, the great end of Christ dealing with us is to convince us to place our confidence in him. And that in him, he has all sufficient life and can safely pass you through any kind of emergency. The great end of you dealing with Christ is for Christ to convince you to put your confidence in him. Hallelujah. Sometimes the delay, sometimes the Christ delay is to try the characters that knew the case. He tries, he wants you to know and that these delays that come, it's not because God doesn't care or he doesn't, you know, it is because he wants to see that that which you profess is really true. The true trial for your faith is when your faith will stand in the absence or in the distance of the object of your faith. And that is Jesus Christ. But I want you to know at the back of your life, Christ is always there. Hallelujah. And then finally, I want to say that if you, and come, if, you, you, if you come to Jesus Christ with faith, if you come to Jesus Christ, if you meet Jesus Christ with faith, you will find more than what you lost. Hallelujah. Lazarus was brought back from death and also received healing. Hallelujah. 
if you admit Jesus Christ with faith, if you will trust and hope in what he's saying to you, you will find more than what you lost. So the call today is for us to hold on to Jesus Christ. It's for us to know that he is with us. Because that's what they are doing. They are trying to separate. You know, they separate you. And when you are alone, that is when they can take you down. Like if you a three, a three cord, this thing, three full cord is not easily broken. If you are going to be with state Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I tell you that your, your hope is going to be, it will see me fruitful. Hallelujah. Let us not stay with men. Let us not stay with men. And then finally, I want to, I'll just cut it here. But let's look at um, the same verse, verse, um, verse, chapter 11, verse 48. John 11, 48. So this is after Jesus, uh, this has, uh, Lazarus has come out and everything, they have said everything that they wanted to say. But I will say what? And then most of the Jews believed in him. So last week we heard that it is about Jesus Christ. It's about God. It is all about God. It is not about anybody. It is about God. Elijah, after everything that he said, it was the still small voice that convinced that what it was about God and that God had a plan. And that God had kept 70,000 people who had not bowed their knees to the bar. The same thing, this, this sickness is not unto death, but it is for the glory of God to be seen. Always know that what you are going through, it is not about you. It is about that the glory of God will be seen. And people will see it and then they will give God glory. Bible says what? And, and, what? and then there's 45 thoughts. Then many of the Jews, that's after this, uh, Eli, um, Lazarus had been, raised, uh, been brought out of the grave, he was walking, they didn't take everything. And so, then many of the Jews came to Mary and had seen things which Jesus did and believed on him. These same people who wanted to stone him, now they are believing on him. Hallelujah. So the danger, which normally will push you away, because, oh, you know, if you go here, they will stone you. If God is saying, this is my way, go there because he has a plan. Hallelujah. I was, some of them went to the Pharisees to tell them what had happened. And then look at what they said. The Pharisees said in verse 48, don't depend on any man. Man may, he is not for you. Look at what they said. If we let him alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Verse 48. These are the Pharisees, the ones who were supposed to be their leaders. He said, if we let Jesus Christ alone, all men will believe on him. So they know. So convince yourself today that what God has said is true. God, he knows. He knows all things. He's the source of all things. And I'm the first and I'm the last. I am he. There's no God beside me. Look at what the Pharisees are saying. If we let him alone, all men will believe. It is not your place to convince people to believe. Just do your part. Speak the word. Show your faith. Show that you believe. Let them know that this God that you're talking about is here. He is real. That you believe what he's saying. That is your part. And let the Holy Spirit do his part. The conviction comes by the Holy Spirit. They know it's not. If we let him alone, so why, why, are we, why are we hesitating? Why are we hesitating? Why are we not doing what we are supposed to do? The church is not advancing because we think that Christ is not here. And the things that he did, we cannot even... But he said, we will do greater things. Can we believe that we will do greater things? Can we believe that we will do greater things? If we can believe that we will do greater things because he said it, can you imagine how we we'll advance the kingdom of God and let God be God? But because the church, we don't even believe in what, the same, what we have, that which is our, that, that our object of who we are, we don't believe in it. But, but by the people who are our opposition, they know what we can do if we stick together and do it. But I came to let you know, that was that Moses, when he had come of age, when he had come of age, when your faith has come up, they come to the it mature. I would say he chose to suffer. But he chose to suffer because he saw the one who was invincible. 
Who are you seeing? I come to let you know what, that what Christ is by you. You're, not, you're never alone. It may seem as if not everything is going to strip away from you. But know that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is still with you. Do you believe this? And this morning, can you surrender to Jesus Christ at his feet? Yeah, you love Lazarus. And the thing that you love most, but he died. But can you believe this? Can you still surrender and say, God, you are still God. And let him be God. And you'll be surprised the things that he does. Stop saying that it is thinking. That is not your place. It is not your place to describe what's in the grave. Your place is to go to Christ. And if you have to go to the grave at all, then let Christ be the one leading the way and see what the grave will turn into. The grave that was carrying that which was thinking now became a source of life because he called for that which was dead. And that it came for. So in these times of uncertainty, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what's coming next. But I came to let you know that Christ is still here. You are not alone. Do you believe that? That's my question. Do you believe that, that Christ is still here? He's still here. He's still here. He's still here. This morning, I want you to just, we want to just bow down our heads and we're just going to pray. You only get a chance just to read John 11 and look at the, the way they all reacted to it. Martha rushed, but Mary was very reflective. And once he had come, once he was convinced, that would say he history. When he heard the master calls, he hissed the word. When he went, he was saying, she fell at her feet. This morning, I want you to fall at your feet. Fall at the feet of Jesus Christ. For everything that you can list and say that, oh, God didn't do it. I know, yeah, it didn't happen the way he wanted it. He wanted it to come at a certain time and he didn't come. But can you let go and just fall at his feet and see that you are my master. You are my Lord and you are my king. I thank you that you are here. That is all that matters. The Lord is here. That is all that matters. Whatever has happened is irrelevant. Today, the Lord is here. And because the Lord is here, he said, I am the life and the resurrection. That which is dead will be brought to life. And that which is still alive will never die. Can you believe that? That that which you love and you've lost, he said that that thing will be brought back to life. If it is well, and that which is alive will never die. Whatever has happened, you have every reason to be sad, you have every reason to be bitter. But I, I want you to know that the Lord is here. The Lord is here. He's here. He can make everything anew. He can make everything fresh again. Sarah received strength to conceive because he believed the one who promised. Abraham sacrificed his son because he knew that God was able to bring him to life. Moses, obviously when he was come of age, chose to suffer. So, because he saw the one who was invincible. This morning, I want to encourage you. Whatever you can list is fine. But I'm praying that you will just submit to him. Lay at his feet. Lay at his feet. Lay at his feet. Let us go to Jesus Christ. And let us throw Jesus at our problems, not the other way around. Don't believe in any man. Because they are thinking about themselves, not about you. That everything that you're going through right now, it is for the glory of the Lord. And if you come to Jesus Christ with faith this morning, you will receive more than what you lost. You will be resurrected and you also receive healing. And he says that that which is not dead will never die. We give you praise and we give you glory this morning. Amen.